Do it. All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks again for tuning in to Word Sesh. Um, this is the WooCommerce, I guess, roundtable. Um, we're going to be talking about... Um, it's a non-technical talk about WooCommerce, the plugin. Um, uh, so what is WooCommerce? Um, most of you guys probably know what WooCommerce is, but we just like to cover uh, this, what it is, if you don't know. Uh, WooCommerce is a WordPress shopping cart, an e-commerce solution uh, for WordPress. It's open source, and you are free to do anything with it. Community Developed um, has over 190 contributors now. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly uh, accurate as of today. Um, and it's backed by a respected company, um, WooThemes. Um, so a brief history about WooCommerce. Um, it was uh, forked by JiggleShop in um, September uh, of 2011. Uh, so I think we're about two years now. So that was 1.0. We're at uh, 2.1 now. Um, so <coughs> still, I think it's still uh, still pretty young. Um, yeah. So that's just a brief a brief intro to what WooCommerce is. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, introduce all of us. Um, so we'll start with Brent Shepard. Hi, I'm Brent. Uh, I'm the only one here who doesn't work for WooThemes, uh, but I do release uh, most of my software through WooThemes, their uh, third or their extension marketplace. Uh, they have I'm not even sure how many, maybe 50 to 100 uh, independent developers now who release extensions uh, through their marketplace. Uh, I develop WooCommerce subscriptions as well as uh, PayPal digital goods, but WooCommerce subscriptions is certainly where I spend the most time and uh, the one that uh, I enjoy working on the most. Cool. Um, so we'll start with... Next is uh, Kuhn Jacobs. Hey, hello. Uh, my name is Kuhn Jacobs. I live in the Netherlands. Um, I'm one of the, of the three main developers of the WooCommerce plugin. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. Along with uh, Mike and James, I'm uh, responsible for making sure that our uh, our plugin remains working and that everybody can have an easy way to set up a uh, yeah a, a WordPress powered web shop. So that's what we do. Cool. Next up is uh, Daniel Espinosa. I'm Daniel Espinosa, and uh, I work for WooThemes as a WooCommerce support guy. Um, I have the, I guess, the distinction of, uh, I'm also a plugin developer, but I guess I have the distinction of creating the first um, add-on for WooCommerce way back in 2011. So um, that was my my. Thing to make. But uh, I spend my days supporting uh, WooCommerce customers. Cool. Next up is uh, Patrick Rowland. Hi, I'm Patrick. Um, I do full-time support for WooCommerce. I try to make people happy, and I love Star Wars. <laughs> awesome. And uh, me, Scott Baskard, I work for WooThemes uh, doing WooCommerce support. Um, yeah, cool. Again, we're happy you guys could join us. Um, so, so at the first word test, uh, Kuhn and I kind of did like a more of a, I guess, technical overview of 2.0. Um, this is kind of a non-technical talk. Uh, we kind of wanted to get discussion going, so... I think it's really cool that we could all be here. I really like having Brent here too, um, someone who's not a part of WooThemes. Uh, they're a party developer. It's cool to get his opinion on some of the stuff that we'll be going over. Um, all right, so first on the agenda, um, so I kind of went over an, an introduction to WooCommerce uh, and what it was. Um, I don't know if you guys want to touch on anything else besides that. Um, Guys, anything on, as far as an intro? I think uh, the cool, one of the cool things I want to talk about um, some cool st statistics that came out um, recently about about WooCommerce. Um, they kind of caught my attention. And I thought were really cool, actually. Um, so WooCommerce again, it's uh, about two years old. Can you guys correct me if I'm wrong? That it's about oh, what two two years, two and a half years. Yeah, October um, two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, it's fairly new in the e-commerce world. Um, to, to things like what, like Magento. Um, so there's a, there's a site um, called trends.buildwith.com slash shop. I can post this in the chat. Um, one second. One of you guys can post in the chat. In the chat. I'll um, get it in there, Scotty. Yeah, so it, it just shows um, some cool stats with uh, some of the major, like, top ten, uh, I guess, e-commerce solutions. Not, not WordPress. So you have Magento, you have Yahoo Store, you have... 
uh, Miva Merchant, Magenta Enterprise, OS Commerce, um, Big Commerce, Demandware, and ATG Commerce. Some of these I've actually never even heard of, um, but they are they're you know the top ten used um, across all e-commerce solutions. And it's cool to see WooCommerce on there. I think it's awesome. Uh, not only is WooCommerce on there, but it's uh, it's ranked pretty high as far as you know percentage wise. Um, so this shows the top ten thousand sites, the top one hundred thousand sites, and the top million sites. They take something like the top million sites, right? WooCommerce is seven percent of that. You know, Magento is thirteen percent, and and fifty one percent is other. So these are things that you know that we don't we don't know what they are. Um, I think that's a really cool number. I mean, again, like I, I want to see WooCommerce be you know fifteen twenty percent, but to see it at seven percent of it's two years old. I think that's really cool. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Of course, it's it's a massive ego boost to see uh, the plugin that we all work on and support every single day that it's actually being used by by a lot of people in the world, especially in the list that says the, the top million websites on on the entire internet that we have such a massive share in that already. No. So yeah, other than uh, being really happy with how WooCommerce is doing, this is this is the massive ego boost. Yep. Cool. So we can, I guess, if uh, we can move on from that. Um, mm -hmm. So let's let's jump into development. Um, so the first thing we had here was, um, what advice would you give a developer getting started with WooCommerce development? So we'll start with you, Kuhn. Yeah. Well, um, something that I've personally been focusing on for the last couple of months is setting up uh, our developers portal, which is, which can be found on developerwooteams.com slash WooCommerce. Um, this is this is um, if you see it for the first time, you'll see uh, similarities with how WordPress Core is doing it with make.wordpress.org. Um, we it's basically a P2 install which lists everything that we do that we think is worth sharing with our uh, growing group of, of uh, developers working on anything WooCommerce related. Um, so yeah, that's that's if I were just um, getting started with doing anything WooCommerce related, that's definitely one of the blogs that I'd start uh, looking into. Um, besides that, we have obviously our GitHub repository as well, where where a lot of the magic is happening, and basically just just getting to know the people that are working with WooCommerce already, all the extension developers, and and certainly the the core development team as well. Just get to know the people, know what is going on in the ecosystem, and just just have a go at it. Cool. All right, so Daniel, what do you think? Well, my suggestion would be to uh, jump on GitHub and you know, you know, fork the repo, start reading through the code, and build something. You know, just start. Um, you know, build build a build a. You know, it maybe it may sound uh, aggressive, but build a plugin. You know, a, a payment gateway. You know, look at how the check payment gateway works, and it's a very simple pl uh, payment gateway. Look at how it works. And uh, try and, and rebuild it or build something like it. Um, check check your code into GitHub. Share it with with uh, the community. Go into uh, IRC into hashtag WooCommerce and talk with us about it. And and uh, just start writing code. And that's uh, you know you're gonna get better at it the more you do it. Awesome. What do you think, Brent? Yeah, I agree. I think if you if you start with something small, so probably the best place to start is a problem you've had with working with WooCommerce. Uh, and if you start with something small, you put it up on GitHub, put it out there, get feedback from from both people using it, but also you can send it to other developers in WooCommerce and just sort of say, hey, what do you think of this? Have I missed something? Is this a good way to do it? And often I think it might take a little while, but we'll probably have a look over it and give you feedback on it if, you, if you're just starting out. Definitely, I think we're all pretty trying to welcome new people into, into WooCommerce development. Uh, the more, more developers we have in the community, the better. Um, if you're looking for ideas, though, I, I like that WooThemes have uh, their ideas.wethemes.com, and they have a forum on there specifically for WooCommerce with things people are asking to get built. Uh, and that's a great place if, if you're serious about creating an extension business uh, around WooCommerce. It's a great place to go and get ideas uh, for what what there is already demand for and things that you might you might have special skills or existing knowledge in, like multi-site or point of sale or 
something like that that you can you can go in and actually build an extension for it and release it and know that there's actually there's going to be hundreds thousands of sites and people that want to use that extension. Cool, Patrick. Uh, kind of what Daniel and Brent have already said. Um, I think for me, I learn best always by learning or by by doing. I learn best by by doing something. So um, for me, I learned everything when I had a client who wanted a specific really custom theme, and I just had to dig in and learn all the hooks that WooCommerce uses and deregister or dehook them and hook them into different places. And um, it's you just have to you just have to dig in. Um, so find find a demanding client and try to make something good out of it. Awesome. And I guess the only you know the only advice that I had or I thought about um, that was you know, pretty important I think was um, number one don't look back you're in the right place I think Woo WooCommerce is a great place if you're looking to, to get into development with e-commerce and WordPress um, get involved that's pretty important. Um, one important thing I think uh, just to point out is WooCommerce isn't just Woo themes right so it's open source so don't be scared to get involved with GitHub it's not just us we want we want you know we want involvement. Um, so we love your involvement in making WooCommerce better. Um, so we highly encourage that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I added the I added a link to the issues the GitHub issues list in the chat. Um, and if you and actually even smaller than m making a plugin uh, is looking at an issue, and it may be as simple as you know adding some states for a uh, for a country or you know um, doing a small uh, a small trans translation. You know you don't have to start large. Cool. Um, yeah, so I guess we have time for this. Uh, we had uh, let's talk about a little bit about um, our WooCommerce development workflow, um, some tools that we use, um, some helper plugins. Um, if you guys want to, I don't know, just talk about that a little bit. Um, one of you guys can just start. I, I guess we don't have to go through everyone, but uh, anything that you guys want to share about your development workflow, uh, Brent and Kuhn, I guess you guys would be pretty good with this. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's. I wouldn't say messy, but it's complex. <laughs> one, of, one of the things, one of the things to sort of pay attention to, I guess, when you're first starting, if you haven't worked with e-commerce before and you start with uh, WooCommerce, you, you might come in thinking it's going to have the simplicity of uh, WordPress and and about the most complicated object you have or will deal with regularly in WordPress is the post uh, or a custom post type, and that has you know maybe let's say or on a custom post type, 30 or 40 different bits of metadata to it. Whereas WooCommerce, you have orders uh, which have have a lot more metadata coming from a lot more different places. You have products, then you then you have custom product types which you uh, can can throw all sorts of different things in. I know I know this from subscriptions. I add dozens of different bits of metadata to both orders and to products. So I think it, it can take a little bit more patience and also. Uh, a lot more sort of focus um, than than your typical WordPress or, or smaller, simpler WordPress plugin development. But that's also that's also what I like about it. Um, so to try and manage that, yeah, I mean, it's just I have I have multiple different WooCommerce local installs uh, because um, I'll have different versions. Uh, I don't I don't use anything like Vagrant um, because I just I find it easy just to have all the stores there rather than running it all on VMs. Uh, there's good dummy data in WooCommerce now, so if you first download it and set up a site, you can use the dummy data included to get, I don't know, 30 or 40 products in there and um, start start testing it out that way. Uh, I test mostly with Stripe for purchasing just because it's so quick and makes it so easy both from a local install or, or a remote install. If you're testing with PayPal, you usually have to have a site that's accessible uh, by the PayPal uh, servers so that they can do IPN um, callbacks and that, that can make things a bit of a pain. So yeah, testing with Stripe, having a local install uh, and using dummy data are probably my top three tips for getting started. Cool. Can I, can I add in, I mean we were, I think Daniel you said you find an issue on GitHub and if you, if you find an issue that you don't quite know how to solve, one of the cool things that Daniel and I just tried was um, we tried using Screen Hero to do some pair programming, and it was really, really awesome. Um, so Daniel and I worked through a couple. Both of neither of us knew how to solve the problem individually, but using Screen Hero to share our screens back and forth, we were able to figure it out. Yeah, it was very cool. We, uh, you know, it was the first time doing that. It was pretty much just me, me looking at Patrick's uh, IDE and then working through 
uh, audio um, saying, hey, you know, what, what was that PHP command? <laughs> what was that PHP <laughs> function? Uh, what are the parameters? Uh, you know, pull we'll up the codecs and then, but we, uh, in about, I don't know, what, 45 minutes, mm -hmm. we were able to uh, to add on that, that p cool piece of functionality and do a pull request, so. Awesome. All right, let's push forward. Um, so let's take a question, actually. Some questions came through. Um, so Nick asked, how long on average to create a WooCommerce extension? Uh, I'm going to say that's a pretty uh, a vague question because, uh, I don't know, I'm going to, you know, Brent's a good example. Uh, his extension is pretty complex, so that wouldn't be a very easy thing to do. Yeah, uh, Brent, and, a couple hours? Uh, yeah, a couple <laughs> hours, right? <laughs> so it took, it took me two days to write the PayPal digital goods extension of probably you know, done a little bit more on top of that, but that was yeah. a solid base, and it's been about 18 months to develop to subscriptions to where it is today. Yeah. And something I can say, I mean, like that, so. yeah, and, and you guys can say, I mean, being in support, we see this all the time, is like with WooCommerce, these extensions, you know, maybe they're easy to make at first, but they're, they're constantly evolving, right? So mm -hmm. you have just people with so many ideas, so many different scenarios for shops. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, WordPress plugins, uh, that's, you can make something and it, and it does what it does, and it just does that, right? But I feel like with, with e-commerce or with the shops, like, there's so many things that you could add. Obviously, we don't want to add things for one person, but I think a lot of people can uh, benefit from these features that people, you know, have ideas for, and we and we like adding them. So it's constantly evolving. So I mean, it's pretty easy to make a WooCommerce extension, yes, but uh, it's you know I, I couldn't put a time on it, right? Definitely, it's it's uh, depends on the complexity. Um, I remember when I first built the Authorize.net plugin, uh, it took me 15 hours to build it, and uh, most of that actually was understanding um, the payment gateway abstract class and knowing how the, the <coughs> checkout checkout workflow worked and figuring that out uh, and then building other payment gateways after that were much quicker so because payment, payment gateways are pretty simple yeah. um, you send a trans you send a transaction receive a response and then either uh, either finish the order or you cancel the order um, and so it's just uh, stuff something like subscriptions though is uh, is is worlds away as far as complexity so cool. Yeah, Nick. Just to summarize, I mean, it's it's uh, I mean, it's pretty well documented. So if you, I don't want to scare you from getting involved in, in development. Uh, it's just hard to put an average on on how long it would take. Um, next question. So what's a good way to get in touch with the WooCommerce devs to show them an add-on? Uh, what do you guys think? Coon's gone. He would have been the best. Yeah, Coon would be the best for that. I mean. You can contact us. I think we're all look. You know, if you, if you made something cool, we'd love to see it. Um, we don't have like I guess an official place to show us, um, you, and right. Yeah, I mean, IRC is publicly accessible, so if yeah. you've got it up in GitHub or something like that, or you could um, you could jump in on IRC and um, link a few of the guys to it, add them as um, collaborators if you want to have it in a private repo, yeah. uh, and then they can start checking out the code, have a play with it. Um, or even just put it out to other other developers and ask them to check it out. Cool. And, and another thing that's like, you know, kind of what I said before, you know, WooCommerce isn't just WooThemes. So I see a lot of people who make a lot of cool stuff, and the first thing they want to do is start up on WooThemes.com. Uh, put it on the WordPress.org repository. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people will use it if it's cool. That we, uh, we'd love to see it there. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I feel like there's a lot, maybe some people who just don't put it up anywhere because they can't put it on WooThemes.com. Uh, I'd love to see a lot more, you know, awesome extensions on WordPress.org. All right, so let's move on. Uh, that was development. Let's move on to um, support. Um, so something that's, you know, pretty dear to my heart. I do uh, WooCommerce support along with Patrick and Dan here. Um, I mean, Brent does too. So <laughs> Brent's a lot, of, a lot of his work is probably supported in extensions as well. Um, so let's uh, let's every, everyone here. Let's share. Um, well, first, it looks like we lost Coon, but hopefully he'll be back. Um, so let's let's share our top practices um, for support with WooCommerce. Again, we'll start from uh, from from the left here. So Brent, uh, I'm I'm kind of lucky. So if you release uh, if you release extensions through WooThemes.com, uh, the WooThemes guys will take care of first level support, and that's brilliant as a uh, an independent extension developer because it means you immediately get a support team in t every time zone. Uh, all sorts of advantages like that, guys who do this day in day out. So I've I've actually learned a lot by working with you guys. Uh, and I I guess the the top tips for me this is something where I'm pretty lucky. Where usually by the time I get pulled into a ticket, uh, all the information is there. Uh, there's a, so WooCommerce has a system status uh, report which you can output to a text file and then upload to the ticket. It gives you all sorts of things like 
the version of PHP running on the server, the amount of memory there, the extension, uh, the plugins that are installed on the WordPress site, the versions of all the plugins, uh, and that kind of stuff is incredibly valuable because if if you're diagnosing a bug, it's really just a matter of uh, trying to isolate it as quickly as possible uh, and figure out figure out you know what what the cause or what the possible causes are, and then trying to reproduce it on your own site. And the more information you have for that, the better. So it's probably a combination of getting as much information as possible uh, and and doing that as quickly as possible or right from the outset. Cool. Daniel? Um, yeah, so what I put down for my support suggestion was really isolate the problem. Um, we get a lot of questions, or I handle a lot of the questions for the shipping gateways and payment gateways, and um, we just see a lot of uh, conflicts with, with other plugins. So the first step is to just isolate the, you know, turn off everything except for WooCommerce and the one plugin you're checking out. And uh, and then see if it's still and see if that problem's still happening. Uh, if it is, then you know then you might have found a, a core bug. Uh, if it's not happening, then it's probably a conflict with one of your other plugins. So then you can uh, reactivate those plugins one by one, find the issue, and then you know and then we can figure out what what that is. But um, just you know take everything that's bound to bare, bare bones and then bring it back up. And if you if it's on a live site, you know the you know just a good standard site. Practices to have a development area, have a staging site that mirrors your production, where you can do this type of research uh, and figure out figure out issues. Awesome, Patrick. Um, you know those. Though, um, obviously, you want to have as much information as possible. You know, if if I see one of your plugins is out of date, I can immediately say, make sure you update subscriptions. It's you know that was a bug that was previously fixed. Um, but more, I, I think, and that, that's an amazing start. An amazing start. But after that, you need to really define the problem. Um, so if you can give me like one paragraph of like really good, like when I activate this plugin, this part of, on this page breaks. Here's a screenshot. Help. As opposed to like, it's not broken. Need more help. Fix now. Like you know, I just can't do much. Um, so you know, just 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 try to concisely tell me what the problem is, and I'm going to do my best to help you. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to skip Kuhn because I have no idea where he is. Um, so I have uh, most importantly, I guess, uh, would be to stay up to date. So you know, run the latest version. I can't tell you how many <laughs> how many times I still have people who aren't upgrading. Uh, it's uh, oh yeah, still driving me nuts. I'll uh, I don't know. Giving me gray hair and or I'm losing my hair because of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> people, I don't understand why they don't why they don't update. Uh, I'll never know. Um, so that having a testing environment definitely you guys have covered that. That's really important. Um, if you have a testing environment, you can start tearing things apart and figure out what's what's wrong pretty easily. Uh, otherwise, you're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to change anything because I'm going to break my site. Well, yeah. So have a testing environment. It's pretty obvious, and then then you can figure out a lot of this stuff. Um, backups are pretty important. Um, and then I think one of the, I guess, you know, again, so there are thir there's a lot of third-party stuff, so you can, you know, get third-party WooCommerce, WooCommerce themes, plugins, all this stuff. You know, people are making a lot of stuff with WooCommerce. Um, I would try to find stuff that has a good reputation. You know, is it is it working with the latest versions of WooCommerce? You know, are they, you know, if there is a beta version, are they testing against that and making sure that's going to work? So when it's released, your site works when you upgrade. Uh, so I would research before you just buy something because of its functionality, right? So, oh yeah, that looks great. Uh, it's gonna, you know, do wonders for my shop. But you know what? It doesn't work with the latest version of WooCommerce, or it's not compatible with anything. Uh, that's not worth it at all. Um, so do so get stuff that has a good reputation. Doesn't necessarily have to be our products. Um, there's a lot of other good stuff out there, and something that's well supported. Um, I think support, you know, product has to be obviously good, but support is probably the second or the most important thing bundled with, with you know, the product. So, um, yeah. Kuhn is still gone. All right, so we can keep moving on. <laughs> uh, let's go over some, I think people really want to hear about AppPressor. So uh, <laughs> some yeah. cool WooCommerce uses. Um, so everyone here, let's, uh, let's all share a, little, a cool thing uh, that we've seen, uh, you know, Outside of the standard just WooCommerce shop that's uh, available when you download it and uh, install WooCommerce, so um, I have IE AppPressor. Uh, anyone want to talk about that or you know go over that or what it is? Yeah, I'd love to. Cool. I think it's amazing. So AppPressor uh, 
is released. I'm not sure if it's public yet, but they're, they're sort of rolling it out over the next, as in beta, over the next few weeks, and uh, then I think it's due to launch early next year. The idea is you can create a native iPhone or Android app using WordPress. Uh, I've watched the videos. I haven't, I haven't actually played with it yet, but I have used House of Rags uh, with a Z, which is uh, the first the first app that they've released on the iPhone store, and it's it's, it's amazing. You can you can tell it's WordPress, but you can tell it's WooCommerce in the background there. Some of the some of the button styles are still WooCommerce, like unmistakably WooCommerce buttons. But it's it's brilliant to be able to say, if if you're a um, if you're a design agency. Uh, and someone comes to you and says, okay, I want a website, I want an uh, e-commerce store, I want an iPhone app, which people can also purchase from. I think it's amazing that just because of the, the nature of the WordPress community and because of the nature of having WooCommerce built on top of WordPress, uh, any any store can, any uh, design agency can now say without having to have an iOS developer, an Android developer, a web developer, yeah, we can give you all of that. Uh, you know, and, and the price will be extremely competitive compared to rolling it all from scratch. So I think our presser, I think our presser is really cool. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think, I mean, just the idea of that, you know, if if it wasn't WooCommerce, obviously, or if, but just having that with WordPress is, uh, it's it's groundbreaking. I can't wait to see uh, what what comes out of that. Uh, it's a whole whole new player, um, you know, to the WordPress uh, ecosystem. <laughs> Is it just iOS or is it also Android? Android as well. I've seen. I haven't seen an Android app running it, but no. Hmm. So actually, Scott, um, one of the lead developers of the project, he is giving a talk uh, at the last session here uh, in Room A. So definitely, uh, I look. I really look forward to that talk. It's going to be awesome. Cool. So some other stuff we have on here. Um, so, you know. Some cool uh, WooCommerce use cases. So a large website, um, www.kinder-book.de. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you have people asking, like, oh, show me, show me. The first thing they ask you when they want to use an e-commerce solution, so, show me, show me a site that has, you know, over 10,000 products. Um, and you know what? Sometimes it's hard to find a site like that. But this site has six, has 60,000 products, and it's running WooCommerce. I think that's really cool. Um, and again, these these are the kind of sites that push boundaries. Uh, when you have an example site like this and it works, uh, I love promoting it. Uh, you know, it's yes. it takes obviously if you're the first one to to do it, uh, you're obviously I don't know. A lot of people want to have an example of something that works that that's doing that. And if if there isn't, they won't try. So I think it's cool that this uh, this site has over sixty thousand products and works. And, and uh, yeah. Um, some other stuff. So let's talk about uh, something that's that's uh, new in WooCommerce, um, the upcoming REST API. I wish Kuhn was here. Uh, this would be great for him. That, to would, talk that about. would be perfect for him. <laughs> uh, I don't know, if Brent. You want? To, can you touch on this? Sure. So uh, there's work being done in WordPress uh, at the moment. I think for 3.9 maybe to uh, have a, a REST API built on WordPress, and WooCommerce 2.1 is actually going to launch with. Uh, uh, API design very closely to that, um, but get it out. I guess we need to get it out earlier for things like iPhone apps and, and other sorts of um, other sorts of use cases. But the idea is that it, it frees the data um, that's stored in your WordPress or WooCommerce database from only being used the way the WordPress and WooCommerce applications use it, and it makes that data available to just about anything. Uh, anything you want to have running it. So if you want to integrate with the point of sale system, you now have a, a RESTful API to do that. If you want to integrate with an iPhone app or an Android app, uh, you now have an API to do that. If you want to have two sites talking together, so maybe you've got a drop shipper or something like that, uh, instead of having to do the old automatically forward emails to them so that they know what order goes out, you can you can build an application on top of WooCommerce standalone, uh, still accessing your WooCommerce data via the REST API. So it's it's going to be amazing to see what people use it for. Yeah, it's uh, definitely exciting. And again, like so, WooCommerce is pretty new. A lot of people probably thought this you know this obviously should have been a part of WooCommerce since day one. Um, but WooCommerce is growing fast, and I'm really excited. I mean, it, we've we've probably all been waiting for this, but it's exciting to see that it's here. Um, can't wait to see what people do with that. Um, all right, some other cool use cases. So we also see people using WooCommerce as an invoice system. 
um, kind of stripping out, I guess, uh, the regular shop stuff and, and using it as that. I think it's cool to see other people use, uh, I mean, you could have an invoice system plugin, but, you know, WooCommerce has a lot of the stuff that you need to do that. Um, I think it's cool to see people use it as that. Um, and next we have hdpiano.com. I don't know who added these. Um, if you guys I added that. Cool. So he, he uses, uh, Sean is a, like quite a talented piano player in Korea, and I just love him because he was one of the first users using subscriptions, uh, and he's built a real little business out of it now, off WooCommerce, off subscriptions, and now uh, he, he sent me an email a few months ago, something about, you know, thank you for the subscriptions plugin. It's really making a dream come true. Uh, and I just, I just love seeing people uh, using using the software to do that because it really allows them to create a business in something they're yeah. passionate about or something they're interested in. It's it's relatively low cost to set up and experiment with and see if it works. You don't, you don't need to be spending tens of thousands of dollars to get, get something quite sophisticated set up. Uh, so I think that's that's a pretty cool use case. You know, awesome. uh, ju just in general, like, cool use cases of WooCommerce are people building businesses using WooCommerce. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, for a couple, exactly. you know, you can use any payment gateway you want, any of the really awesome fancy extensions we have for a couple hundred bucks, and you can have a totally awesome working e-commerce store that can, you can, that can be your sole income. That, that to me, is the coolest use. Yeah, that, and then, you know, you can start even for free. Like, you don't have to pay anything, you can, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, Make a business out of it. It's 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 really cool. Um, you know what? Five, ten, fifteen years ago, like this is unheard of. Uh, it's it's you know open source. It's awesome. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, all right. So and last, last night uh, when so Shane was talking, um, when Shane was giving his just like Air was giving his presentation, someone asked. He was talking about Modern Tribes plugins, and he said someone asked what what they sell their plugins with, and uh, I checked the site, and they said they use WooCommerce, and they had said it's been working great. And they used it. Um, they've been using it for quite a while. So, awesome. All right, so we have ten minutes left. Uh, we can kind of just touch on this topic of uh, the future of WooCommerce, um, and then I'd like to get into some questions, leave some room for some Q and A. Um, so yeah, so just have the future of WooCommerce. I guess we can. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, you know, think outside the box. You know, where do you see WooCommerce going? Um, <laughs> it can be well, crazy. definitely. Definitely not to be outdone by Jeff Bezos. Of course, we're planning a, uh, a WooCommerce drone shipping method. Um, you know, <laughs> building out your yeah. own drones and uh, <laughs> sending your drone drugs. army out into the Ooh. world to deliver Ooh. your to deliver Ooh. your products. You know, powered know. by WooCommerce. It's funny. We're, we're all laughing now, but that's definitely probably going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that. That like so Amazon. Uh, they're obviously building building the drones for their own shipping purposes. But I like the fact that with WooCommerce, if someone wanted, you know, if they if they love building drones and robots or whatever, they could they could build like a, a drone shipping for their local area. And then exactly. they could find build a WooCommerce extension which integrates perfectly with that and they mm -hmm. could release it to the five hundred thousand sites or whatever in their local area who are doing it. Uh, and there's nothing there's no barriers to entry there. It's all open source, it's open community, they can just put it out there and sites can start using it. We, we we already have all the pieces. We have you know when the when the when the API comes in, and we have local the local pickup plus plugin. So local pickup, it'll be local local drone delivery plus. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just hook the API up to your uh, your fulfillment center, and boom. So two wow. years, five years. When do we get it? <laughs> yeah, I think WooCommerce two point two point two. <laughs> Built into core. Back the drones. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm. Awesome. All right. So next, becoming number one. Uh, I think this. You know, I, obviously everything can come to an end, but uh, I just think it's really cool to see where WooCommerce started, where it is now, um, where it's going, where it continues to go. Um, I think it's a really cool place to be as far as us working with WooCommerce. Uh, if you're using WooCommerce, I think you're again you're in a great place. There are a lot of other good solutions, but uh, I don't know. I just have uh, really good feelings and good experience with WooCommerce. So. Uh, next, so education, learning, documentation. Um, and you guys want to talk about that? Well, I think um, well, I think that because, as I was sort of saying before, because e-commerce is more complicated than uh, than publishing, uh, I think there is there is a big need for better education. So I know um, True Dean and Video User Manuals in Australia they do uh, video tutorials for using WooCommerce. Uh, that was the first WooCommerce book. Um, published by Pack Publishing about uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think I think we'll see a lot more of that because, particularly with 
So whenever I, whenever I do a talk about WooCommerce, one of the things that everyone asks me is, is there an extension for this, or which extension should I use for that? And I, it, it's incredibly difficult because it's like, well, there's about 500 extensions between the free and paid ones out there. Uh, I don't know them all, so there's there's sort of room for people to educate on the good extensions, which extensions, you know, top 10 shipping extensions. Yeah, there's there's a big big market for big room for people to do more educational resources. Definitely. And we, we know that we have a lot of really passionate users, and uh, we're working on a way to, um, you know, we're working on a place to have the, uh, a one-stop uh, a, a one -stop community for them. Um, you know, this is something that's in the works and something that we're really excited about rolling out in uh, 2014, so definitely keep an eye out for, for, for that. Awesome. Uh, last but not least, before we get into uh, a few questions, I wish we had more time. Uh, but we can answer a few. Uh, there may be talks, I don't know, of uh, some kind of WooCommerce, uh, I guess, <laughs> yeah. future, some kind of WooCommerce meetup, maybe WooCommerce camp. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, I think that, what do you guys think about the idea of something like that? Uh, I think it would be pretty successful. I think uh, there's a lot of people uh, using WooCommerce and want to learn more. So if there's an opportunity to teach people and, and for them to learn, I think I think we should do it. Um, I don't know when. I don't know where. Uh, is it online like WordSesh? Is it uh, actually physically meeting up? Uh, I don't know. So January next year, uh, in combination with the Word, uh, WordPress San Francisco meetup, we're running a, WordPress, a WooCommerce San Francisco meetup. Uh, and then planning to do monthly or bi-monthly meetups uh, after that for the local WooCommerce community here. There's about 15 to 20 people joined up so far without um, me promoting the meetup group or anything like that. And hopefully after the um, hopefully after the first meetup with the WordPress group, we'll get sort of 40 or 50 people because it's just brilliant being able to get together and see what uh, see what other people are doing with mm -hmm. WooCommerce because yeah. it's gone to the stage already where there's so many crazy things you can do with it. Uh, you never know what someone's going <laughs> to going to show you what they've built as their store. Yeah. Brent, is that is that the first WooCommerce meetup, or have there been other ones? Um, I don't I don't know of other ones. So probably the I think first. You started the first. The first of many. Yeah. But I, I'm looking forward to the. Um, I mean, I think Scott's playing it cool. I think there are. Pretty serious internal discussions, aren't there, at Woo Themes about a Woo Commerce camp or conference next year? And I'm I'm really pumped for it. I think it's going to be amazing. You didn't hear from me. Didn't hear it. Yeah, it's all all, <laughs> all in the loader. It doesn't work for Woo. It's not good. So I, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> well, you know, like you said, we have, we have a lot of people excited about Woo Commerce, so the tide's definitely rising. Yeah. And it's cool. I mean, it doesn't matter how many people. It's, I mean, how many people would it take to have a meetup? I think it's like just having a common interest with maybe one other person. You can have a meetup. Uh, so just just the idea of having like common interest and, and being passionate about something, uh, just getting involved and meeting new people and and again sharing ideas. I think that's awesome. So no matter what it is, I, lo I love the idea of of you know kind of getting into even a smaller niche. You know, it is WordPress meetups, but if you have you know more of a common interest, I think there's been you know a BuddyPress meetup. I forget. I think it was in Canada or, or Buddy Press Camp. Uh, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I like to see more more stuff like that in the community. Um, all right, let's get into Q and A. I I hate to uh, cut it. Uh, I guess I don't think we have much left in the agenda, but so some questions. There's a lot of questions, so there's no way that we're going to be able to get through all of these in five minutes. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, we can answer some of these in the chat after. Um, but uh, if you guys see any that just stand off, just go go ahead and answer them. I'm going to go try to. Add. Well, like one of the questions fun. there from TorqueMag was where can, where can people meet ninjas face to face? And uh, one of the cool things about WooThemes is that we are a global company and we're, we cover four continents and uh, you know, several countries and we like uh, sponsoring and, uh, and, and attending WordCamps. So look for WordCamps uh, that, we, that we're going to be at. You know, um, watch us on Twitter and just, you know, or just meet up locally. Like we, got, we have people all over the place. Mm -hmm. And we like and we like talking WordPress. And actually, I think I think there's going to be a lot more of that, Daniel, because I think I think one of the things we talked about in our last Woo trip was like encouraging everyone to go out to more WordCamps. And I think I I think this year all of us are going to go out to at least at least two WordCamps, I guess. Yeah, um, definitely, a, definitely a company initiative. And, and we definitely have people everywhere. I mean, so I mean, I think now in the states we have. I'm kind of, you know, in the right in the middle. We have some people on the West Coast. You're in Texas. We got some people on the East Coast, and then we have tons of people in Europe and elsewhere. So, and now we got Sean up in Canada. So, that's right. 
Awesome. So, yeah, if, if we have th four minutes here. So if you guys have more questions, uh, ask them. There's one here. Um, is it better to install WooCommerce on a separate site or a single install of a multi-site 2.1 beta testing? That's two questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How is it two questions? The first one's about installing it on a single or multi-site, and the second one's about how to how to beta test two. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> it's like one one clear and concise question. question. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, is it better to install WooCommerce on a separate install, or a separate site, or a single install multi-site? Um, you guys think? It depends on the purpose of your site. If if you're running like a really popular blog, uh, and you don't want to draw away from that being a blog about whatever the topic is, then you might want to create like a multi-site and run store.myblog.com. Uh, but if you're if you're setting up a site for the first time, there's there's very uh, very little reason that WooCommerce and all the all the great content management of WordPress can't run side by side in the same install. Didn't Kuhn mention um, we were talking upcoming versions and roadmaps? He'd mentioned that. Uh, they're going to be improving some of the multi multi storefront features of WooCommerce. Yep. So having one admin area run multiple storefronts. Yeah, I think that's uh, like one of the one of the top ideas on our ideas board. Actually, uh, it's been there for a long time. So that's something. Obviously, uh, it's I guess it's complicated. Obviously, to to get that to work, uh, and maybe it's just something we didn't see we needed right away. But obviously, there's a huge need for that. A lot of people want it. So I'm excited for that. I think a lot of people are you know <laughs> waiting and waiting and waiting to see that. Uh, yeah, that's definitely. Really awesome. Yep. Cool. Two point one beta testing. Coon, where are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I had one question from uh, from someone that asked about you know building products and, and uh, plugins and just uh, what how would you go about if you had an idea how would you go about validating your idea and and communicating with store owners to see if it's something that that they would want. Um, you know he has a lot of energy and and uh, some coding skills and. You know, ideas, and you know, you're just you don't want to pour into an idea, and and then you hear crickets. So, how how would you go about validating ideas? Can, can I, say, you know, if it's a small project, just do it anyways. I mean, yeah. if it's if it's, for example, even if it's something that would take you a weekend um, of your own free time, like just do it, and then at least you have the experience of knowing how to do whatever it is you wanted to do. You understand WooCommerce better, and then you understand what people don't want, which is just as important as knowing what people do want. Um, you obviously want to have a product that you can sell or release and have lot be very popular, but if it's a small project, just do it. Hmm. And particularly if he's if he's building it himself, uh, I think WooCommerce skills or, or understanding WooCommerce and being able to build things on WooCommerce is, are going to be incredibly valuable in the future. So even if even if this plugin or this idea, if he spends a week or something building it out, two weeks building it out, and it doesn't do great and, and finds out when he releases it, it doesn't do brilliantly, that's okay because he's going to learn so much in the process that he can then use that on the next uh, mm -hmm. the next plugin or the, or the one after. Or, mm. Good point, yeah. That's a great point. All right, so we're, we have a minute left. I just want to answer this question. So 2.1 beta testing, uh, I didn't see the exact question. So if you have any questions about uh, 2.1 or any future uh, beta <laughs> releases, look at that site, develop.woothemes.com. That's where you're going to find all this information. Um, it's new. It's something we've needed for a long time. Uh, Kuhn took initiative and made it. So that's that's where you want to be if you're interested in you know future releases of WooCommerce. And obviously our GitHub repo. Um, yep. You can download the latest version of the beta there. I, I highly recommend if you guys want to help out. I mean, download it, see what doesn't work, see what works. Um, there's issues. You guys can do pull requests. You guys can, you know, there's a lot of lot of ways you guys can help out if you want to. Again. I don't. I think. I mean, there are. There is a lot of in, involvement. There's like 190 contributors. You know, we're not 190 I, with you, so there are a lot. 199, I think. How much? 199. 199. We, need, we need a special prize for the 200 <laughs> uh, contributor. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I would like to. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. But I think we'll see, we could see a lot more people in there as well. So we're friendly people. We love to uh, see you guys help out. So definitely. I, I think that's it for now. Uh, I guess we can all. Say goodbye. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. Here. Um, that's it for now. If you guys, all right, let's do uh, real quick. Where can we find you guys? On right. the internet. On the internet. So we Everywhere. got <laughs> GitHub. GitHub.com/slash then Brent. Twitter then Brent. Uh, you can find my email, site, stuff like that from my GitHub profile. Cool, Dan. 
I'm uh, D underscore SP, ESPI on Twitter, and I blog at Daniel.gd, and uh, I'm always somewhere, I'm always on Twitter, so just hit me there. Well, Patrick? Um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, BFTrick, um, or I have a programming blog, which is way too long to spell out right now, um, but you can find that th- through Twitter, so. Awesome, and I'm uh, at Scott Baskard. Last but not least, um, Dan's going to give a plug for something real quick. I don't know if he sees it. You see, <laughs> you don't see the chat. All right, uh, no, uh, we want to get blogging for Benjamin. It's all you, man. Oh yeah. So uh, the uh, the blogging for Benjamin. So um, I I challenged the ninjas to hit publish uh, this month, and you know the holidays are so busy. We we thought we'd add something on top of it. Uh, and really, we just wanted to encourage all the all the Wuthemes ninjas to uh, to share their knowledge to um, to to publish at their home, you know, their home blogs, and to just create content that will help the community. So I started the blogging for Benjamins, uh, um, and really, and all it is is, you know, you blog every day for a maximum of 31 days in the month of December, and whoever blogs the most uh, will get a Benjamin, $100. So uh, there's a second and third prize of, of some money as well. So the top three guys are going to get some cash, and we have uh, about seven... Uh, ninjas who are like right there, um, four or five who are who are who have done it every day, and they're just they're just rocking out the content. If you want to see the the good stuff that they're producing, you can check the hashtag um, WTBFB on Twitter, and so they're they're tweeting out their posts every day and and sharing what they're writing. And so some good stuff some good stuff's been produced. I'm excited about it, and so we're just we're just flexing those blogging. Going. I <laughs> lost my video up there. Yep. Scott, you're Scott, you're muted. All right, I don't know what happened. We're back. Everyone say bye. Thanks everyone. <laughs> All right, bye. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Y'all. Yeah. bye.